ride the passenger seat. It's quite relaxing. <laughs> this is what you, this is what we all want. Our girlfriends, fiancés, wives to drive us back after we've been on a, the day of the water. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. The okay. only thing you need more than that is a bunch of fat fish in your lap well. Yes. When you have a day like today, do you do you second guess? You're pre-fishing, or and and what do you think about right now? Are you going to go back to the same goals that you that are the same places you went fishing in pre-fishing tomorrow? Um, it's hard to say what what I'm going to do tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to look at the conditions a little bit. I feel like what I did today was the right thing, even though I didn't get bit. Um, I mean, I had a lot of confidence in the areas that I did fish. And I really felt like this deeper path, the deeper pattern that I was on was only going to get better with the cooling water temps, the colder air conditions. Uh, but that just proved to not be the case. I mean, it was like they were non-existent in those places. And I could have slowed down maybe a little bit more and possibly got bit. Uh, but it's hard when your day is short and you want to check all these areas it's really hard to slow down that much yeah who came up with the the nickname the prodigy do you like it uh that was mercer mercer came up with the prodigy nickname and i like it it's the best one that i've heard it come up with for me yes i mean before it was powerful brand upon it and i didn't really like that that was just okay so i'll go with the prodigy it's okay how big has Mercer been uh, an influence on your uh, fishing career? Uh, he's been a pretty big influence, uh, just in the sense of understanding the industry. People don't realize how good of a fisherman he is and how smart that guy really is in this industry. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun to get to know him and he's one of those guys that I could trust with my life if I needed to. How'd you get introduced to the outdoors? Uh, well, when I was really little, I mean, even before I could walk, my mom was packing me around in a backpack out in the woods, hiking around, fishing, and hunting. Uh, so I just grew up outside for the most part. And then when I was eight years old, I had a family friend that introduced me to tournament fishing. And it's been all downhill since then. Yeah, downhill or uphill? Uphill, downhill, sometimes it's uphill. I'm gonna say it's, it's all been uphill, you know, because we're, we're getting closer to the top. We're getting where we want to be. Well, you came in second in the, the what was that, 2013? Yeah, 2013. Classic. Yeah. Going into that season, does it motivate you or bring you confidence that you can succeed at the highest level? It does give you a lot of confidence uh, that you can continue to catch them throughout the year. Um, the crazy part is, is that even when I've had really good classics, it doesn't necessarily mean that I've had good elite seasons. Uh, so it's hard for me to judge that. I mean, it does give you confidence that you can compete with these guys, and that's really important on a day-to-day -day basis. This is going to be a tough one. Last uh, year, the DQ at what is what was that? It was my Mississippi River Rumble. Two years ago. Two years ago. Yeah. When you when that happens, um, how, how bad was the drive home? Uh, it was pretty quiet. <laughs> I didn't say a whole lot. Um, I was driving home by myself at that point and didn't really talk to anybody, thought about it a lot, and really just kind of prepared myself for what I was going to do next. You know, I knew that at that point, that was kind of my shot to make it to the Classic, and I had just a couple more opportunities that I was going to have to take advantage of. And you did. And, I, and luckily, I did. I came back and won the next Elite event. <laughs> which was kind of, which was even cooler. I mean, it would have been cool to win back-to-backs. Yeah, definitely. Plus another $100,000. I was, <laughs> yeah, nobody can complain yes. about that. No. But, yeah, it ended up working out really well, right? It created a good story uh, for when I did win. And it just, it made that win uh, kind of feel that much more important. Now, I, I said to you on the water today, you've kind of started this go, this GoPro phase in uh, 
in the Elite Series. More and more guys are using them to do vlogs, do all this stuff. Do you like being kind of the face of, or do you enjoy that little? Uh... Yeah, very much so. Uh, I've always had a passion for the photography, videography side of things, and for me, not ever going to school for that or anything, I needed something that was simple, and a GoPro is just that, right? I mean, it's three buttons, pretty easy point and shoot, and I'm able to create and show a lot of people things that they would never see otherwise, so I enjoy that. Now, I know you have the BMP Studios. Yeah. I saw one just the other day with Fletcher and Hunter, yeah. which was great on the St. John's. Yeah. What other new things are coming up for BMP Studios? Uh, you know, I'm not quite sure yet. Um, we're working on some stuff this week with GoPro. Uh, it's kind of a, a different feel for a video uh, than most of the other stuff that I think is going to turn out really good. I don't know. I don't have an exact timeline of things that I'm going to come out with. Uh, I still have some footage, even from last year, that I need to use that's really awesome footage. So, the hard part is getting time to sit down and actually do an edit. You're do, you do the edits yourself? Yeah, I do all the editing myself. So, I keep the footage, I send the footage to GoPro, but all of the videos that... Um, I've produced or put out there are ones that I've edited. So a lot of times uh, you start to, you get to a new body of water. Uh, how hard is it to figure out the new body of water? Do you talk to anybody to get helpful hints that are on the, the Elite Series? No, I didn't talk to anybody. Uh, like this event, didn't talk to anybody. Usually my best events are when I don't know anything about the lake other than the research that I've done myself on the internet um, and when I look at the current conditions and come up with a game plan. And so for me, I, I feel like that's the best way to do it. And to have some guys on tour that you can trust helps a lot where you can kind of run things by each other and bounce ideas back and forth and that usually helps you narrow a lake down a little bit quicker. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that's impressive is that you guys can come to a body of water like here at Hartwell, just spend a couple days uh, out there fishing and still uh, do well and still have a, a flotilla of boats that are watching you yeah. trying to make, trying to find your guys' spots out. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing to see how many people are out there even in, you know, the low teens this morning. I don't know how many boaters were out there they wanted to follow. I think at one point we had eight or nine boats on us in the morning. Yeah. Um, and it, it's cool to see. You know? I mean, that's one of the hardest things in our sport is for people to watch. So anytime they can, I get excited about it. Favorite place to fish and why? Uh, uh, I'd have to say probably still at home. Probably either Coeur d'Alene Lake or some of the small lakes around at home in Idaho. They're just, they don't get as much pressure up there, and beautiful scenery, beautiful water, mountains, uh, and you catch some absolute giant fish, you know? so I, I love being able to do that, go home and fish, and I just don't get to do it as much anymore. Yeah, you're on the road a lot. Uh, how cool was it last year getting uh, the most all-star votes? <laughs> that That's awesome for me. Uh, that gives a lot of validation that you're doing the right things, making the right decisions in the sport. Uh, because without the fans, you don't have anything. Um, so that was really good as far as just a kind of a confidence standpoint and also uh, from a business standpoint with sponsors to you know, be able to show and say, hey, look, um, there were all these people that voted for me to be able to get in. Yeah. Uh, you, you've gained a lot of success very fast in, in bass. Uh, now you get to see, like we saw this morning, the flotilla of boats following you. Does that help you, or how does that hurt your fishing when you're out there? Does it sometimes they get in the way, or are you are you like today? You were able to talk to them and say, "Hey, look, I'm going to go here. Please don't go there." But does it ever get turn around where people are in your way? I learned pretty quick that anytime you've got boats around, spectator boats, the best thing to do is just communicate with them. Because most of the time, if, I mean, I've had it where, you know, they may run over what you want to fish and screw things up, but it's because they don't know. They don't know what you're fishing underwater a lot of times. And so if you're fishing offshore stuff, you just have to communicate with them. And most people are respectful about that. Um, I mean, there are times that 
spot it will pull up and start fishing it possibly if you're trying to let it rest but most of the time I would say 95% of the people are respectful about it. When do you know when it's time to, to leave a productive area and uh, go for someplace else? That's probably the hardest decision in fishing is trying to figure out when to stay and when to leave. Uh, I don't think there's any real black and white answer to it. Uh, you just kind of have to go with your gut feeling uh, and look at the current conditions and try to tell yourself, you know, are, are you doing the right thing? Do you need to wait it out or should you be leaving and looking for new water? Have you ever thought about fishing both series FLW and Elites or just are you just going to stick with the elites? I've thought about it. Uh, the hard part is, is that I'm already so busy that I don't know that I need to add six more events into my schedule. Uh, you know, because then at that point, it kind of takes away from time of other things that I'm able to do. You know, shooting videos or uh, working on new sponsor products and things like that. So, at this point, uh, my main focus is just on BASS. Last question. What do you think of fishing in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> Not uh, the radio show, the fishing in Florida. Honestly, most of the time I think Florida is very overrated. The only reason I say that is because uh, you see all these pictures of 10 pounders yeah. and because there are a lot of 10 pounders that get caught there. But the hard part is, for me at least, is most of the time you'll catch a bunch of like 12 inchers and 2 pounders and then you catch a 10 pounder. Um, and for me, I like to go and fish and be able to catch you know a bunch of 4 or 5 pounders. Yeah. But uh, it's just the way Florida sets up. I really enjoy the style of fishing in Florida most of the time. Um, and I haven't got to spend a whole lot of time down there, but... I don't know. I'm, it's not deep water. So, no, it's not deep water, but yeah. I really like to punch and flip and frog. And, um, so anytime that I can put a punch rod in my hand, I'm pretty happy. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome.